vibe coding just got better. Once you set this up, Cursor can take all the steps to build your app, create them as issues inside of GitHub, and then knock them off one by one. After Cursor has finished each step, you can ask it to update the issue too. Cursor will then go to GitHub and update it with all of the implementation details so that you have a paper trail of everything that was done. Let me show you this in action. So I'm vibe coding a tip tracker app. And typically I ask Cursor to create a software requirements document in a separate file. But this time I asked it to put those as issues into my GitHub repo. So it's made 10 issues here. And what I can do is inside Cursor, just implement issue number two. And it's gonna go ahead and do that. We'll give it a little bit of time. Perhaps we'll speed up this little part here. All right, so it said it's completed issue number two. So now what I can ask it to do is update issue two in GitHub. And now if we go into issue two, refresh it, go into issue two here, we can see what it's done. And then I can double check it and I can close the issue. And then it's just a matter of going through the rest of the issues, numbers three to 10. So using this vibe coding workflow, you're going to be able to stay organized because this system tracks all of your to-dos along with the progress, along with the implementation details. You can also use the same system to keep track of bugs and fixes that you need to do. Number two, it saves you a ton of time because all of those to-dos, I didn't write them myself. I just asked Cursor to put those as to-dos or issues in GitHub and number three, because we're using GitHub to do this, that means our code is protected. We're never going to have to worry about breaking our project because we can always rewind to a previous working state. And number four, after you set everything up, you're staying inside cursor 90% of the time, no more jumping back and forth between different tools. Okay, so there are only three different tools in this workflow. Number one is cursor, and this is going to be our AI development tool. You don't have to use cursor. Maybe you want to use Cloud Code, Windsurf, whatever. I'm using Cursor in this demo. Number two is GitHub, and this is our source control. If you haven't heard of this term before, just think of it as a code vault. It's a way to protect our code and recover our project in case it breaks. It can also be used to track to-dos and issues, as you've seen. That's going to be free to use as well. Number three is going to be Zapier MCP. And this is the connection or the integration piece that makes all of this magic possible. And best of all, all three tools I just listed, you can use them for free. So now let me show you how to set this workflow up. So step one, if you haven't already, go ahead, download and install Cursor and set it up for iOS development. Now there's quite a number of steps involved in setting up Cursor for iOS development. So if you haven't done that yet, I have a video right over here that's gonna walk you through step by step. But assuming that you have Cursor installed and ready to go, then we are going to move on to step two which is to make sure that you have a GitHub account. Again, this is something that you could use for free. If you don't have one, it's a couple seconds to sign up. So go to github.com, hit sign up. You're going to enter in your details. If it asks you which plan you want to choose, just choose the free one. You can do everything that we're going to do with a free account. And just in case you haven't heard of GitHub before or source control, it's basically think of it as a safety net for vibe coders. I talk to so many vibe coders that have to start their project from scratch because AI messed it up so badly with GitHub and source control. You never have to worry about that again. And I have a beginner's tutorial for how to use this right over here. Okay. So once you've signed up for GitHub, you should come into here. This is kind of like your dashboard. What we're going to do is hit new or create a new repository. And for the sake of the demo, I'm just going to call this tip tracker demo. And we can leave the description as is. We're going to choose private and then we're going to toggle on and add a readme. And as for git ignore, you can search for Swift. Okay, so go ahead and hit create repository. And this is essentially creating a code vault for this project that we are going to build. Now for the final piece that makes all of this magic work, that is Zapier MCP. So click on the link in the upper right corner or find the link in the description below the video. That's going to bring you to this page right here. Again, you can use this for free. Zapier has a perpetual free plan and it includes credits for you to use MCP. 
And if you don't know what this is, it essentially lets Cursor connect to external tools, um, not just GitHub, but any other of 8,000 apps that Zapier works with. So you can trigger actions and automate workflows and do all of those things from inside Cursor if you set this up. Okay, so go ahead, click the orange button. If you don't have a Zapier account, you're going to be prompted to create one. So you can go ahead and do that. But if you have one, just go ahead, log in and you'll get to a page like this. So I've already set up this MCP server, but I'm going to set it up again as a demonstration to show you how to do it. So in the upper left hand corner, you're going to click on new MCP server and you are going to select cursor or whichever one you're using because I'm using the cursor code editor. That's what I'm going to select right here. And then we can give it a name. I'm just going to say new vibe, vibing workflow. Say that create MCP server. Now you're going to add all of the tools you want cursor to be able to access. And we're going to set add tool and we're going to search for GitHub. Now, as you see here, there's all these other manners of tools that you can use. I'm just going to choose GitHub for the, this demonstration because we are trying to build this workflow here. Just search for issue. As you can see, there's a bunch of things we can do with GitHub, but we're going to add create issue because we want cursor to be able to automatically create those to do's for us and then update issue self explanatory. Let's click on create issue. And if this is your first time using GitHub with Zapier, it's going to ask you to connect to your account. And because you're logged into GitHub already in your other browser tab, if you hit connect, it's just going to pop up a window and it's going to either do it for you automatically if this is not your first time. But if it is your first time, it'll ask you either to sign in or authorize Zapier to access your GitHub account. And we need that so that cursor can use this Zapier MCP connection to go into our GitHub repository and add those issues and update those issues. Okay, so after you authorize Zapier, you should see your GitHub account here. And then for repo, what I like to do is actually choose the specific repo to use. So wait, we didn't do test, we did tip tracker demo. That's what we're going to do. And I don't have to fill out anything else. I just want to uh, reference that repo. So I'm going to hit save. And then we are going to add the other one that I mentioned, which is to update the issue. Now we're going to choose update issue and we're going to go through the same thing. Actually, I should have hit advanced, but don't worry. You can hit these three dots and hit configure, and then you get to choose the repo here. So set specific value for the field. I'm going to again choose the tip tracker demo and then we're going to hit save and that's all we need to do. Now we need to add this MCP server into cursor and the way you do that is you hit connect and then you get this code right here which you can hit copy on and then we'll add it to cursor. But make sure you don't share this with anyone or else they'll be able to use all of the connections and actions that you've just set up. So we're going to go into cursor now, go ahead and launch that, hit command shift and J to bring up the settings. We're going to go to MCP and then we're going to click on add new MCP server. You can see that I've already got this, but I'm going to just disable it for a second and I'm going to add it anew. So here I'm just going to edit it. If you have other MCP servers, you're going to have to be careful with how you edit this. But if you're doing this for the first time, chances are this is just going to be an empty file. You can just erase everything and just paste the code that you copied from here. And this will be your only MCP server. I think if you have existing MCP servers, then you would be knowledgeable enough to edit this to just add the Zapier one without blowing everything away. And just like that, we've set up all the pieces to our new vibe coding workflow. Let's start our tip tracker project and use this new vibe coding workflow. Okay, so to create our project and put it inside this code vault or repo, we are first going to have to clone this repo locally on our computer because this is just online on GitHub. So the best way or the simplest way that I know how to show you how to do this is to download GitHub desktop. So if you don't have this, go to desktop.github.com 
you're going to download it. And once you launch it, it's going to ask you to sign in with your GitHub account. So go ahead and do that. And then you're going to see an interface. Yours will look a little different because it's a fresh install. But what you're going to want to do is click this drop down or there, there should be an area up here that you can click and you are going to hit add and then clone repo. Then we are going to search for uh, the, the repo that we created, which was tip tracker demo. So let me just hit refresh for a second and there it is. So let me go ahead and clone that. It, you're also going to have to choose the location on your computer where you want to do that. I'm going to put mine on the desktop for demonstration purposes. It's fine. And it's going to be empty. Now we can proceed to create our Xcode project because we are building an iOS app here. So I'm going to go ahead, hit create project on Xcode. Under iOS, I'm going to choose app. I'm just going to name it the same thing. Tip tracker demo and interface Swift UI language is Swift. Um, testing system none, storage none, team none, fine. And then also we are going to put it into the folder that just got created. So when you did the, this here, you cloned that repo onto, I don't know where you put it, but wherever you chose to put it, I chose to put it on my desktop. It would have created a folder there called the name of the repo minus tip tracker demo. So if you actually open your finder and go to that location on your computer, you're going to see the folder here. So here's my folder and it's just got that readme file. So in Xcode, that is the folder you want to put it in. So navigate to that folder. This is where I put mine. And notice that this is blanked out because it knows that this is a repo already. So it's not going to try to create another repo in there. So this, if you've got the right folder, this should be blanked out. Go ahead and hit create. And it's going to create that in there. All right. So now we're done with Xcode. We have our new Xcode project. You can just close this and then we're going to launch cursor and open up our project and start vibe coding this tip tracker. So we're going to hit open project and cursor and we're going to navigate to that folder. So mine was in the desktop. So here is that. Let's do that and hit open. So when I am building a new app, maybe it's a keyword that I found that is a good opportunity. I usually ask AI, what is the primary problem that this keyword is trying to solve? So let's say tip tracker. What's the primary problem that tip tracker apps try to solve on this app store? It's going to do its thing. It's going to tell me all about what these apps do or what the problem is. So I'm going to continue, hit continue and let it do its processing. Okay, so it's basically tracking tips for a couple of different types of jobs, like service workers. And then I follow up by asking if I were to choose one core functionality for the app to solve this problem, what is that single focus functionality? So then it's going to um, say daily tip logging with intone tracking. And then I follow up and I ask, what is the user flow for the core functionality identified above organized by screen? It's going to make the LLM think about it. Okay. And then I follow up and I finally ask it to turn all of that information into a dev focused implementation guide. So let's go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go and do that. And it's actually going to create this implementation guide as a markdown file and put it inside the project. Okay, so it's done. Let's check it out. So here's the implementation guide. And because of the way I worded the prompt, at the very end, you are going to see a bunch of steps like this. So this checklist is what I usually walk through with cursor and I build it step by step. At the end of each step, I test the functionality to make sure it works and that it's correct. And then if it is, I make a commit in source control. So this is where using GitHub is very helpful. We're essentially creating a safe state at the end of each step. In case the project gets messed up on the next step, you can roll back to the previous step that you've already tested that was working. So I show you how to do all of that in my beginner GitHub tutorial. I'll link to it in the description below the video. But in this new vibe coding workflow, 
we don't want to keep track of that by hand. Instead, we want to move all of these steps into GitHub in that repo we set up and have them as issues. In order to do that, we can simply prompt cursor to do it. So what I'm going to say is, can you take the implementation checklist and create an issue in GitHub for each one? Each issue should contain the necessary details for implementation. I'm going to send that and then it's going to run our MCP action to create that issue in the GitHub repo. So I can hit run. And I'm going to have to hit run for each of these steps unless I let it automatically run everything. Now there is a danger to doing that because typically you want to see what it's doing before allowing it to do it. So I still would recommend that you sit through this and just hit run. But if you're feeling particularly adventurous, you can just let it run everything. So that is actually not recommended. You would get a warning when you try to do that as well. Okay, so it's done creating all of the 15 issues. If we go back to our GitHub repository and we hit issues right here, you're going to see that it's created all of these different things and it's numbered from one to 15. So the next step is implement issue one. So it's going to go ahead and do its thing. And while it's doing that, we can actually just go into issue one here and see what it's all about. So it's creating the data models for storing the tips. All right, so coming back here, it looks like all the way down here. Okay, so the implementation for issue one is complete. So after testing it and making sure it's good, what we can do is say update issue one in GitHub. Let's go run the tool to update issue. Okay, so it looks like it's done that. Now, if we go back here and we hit refresh, we can see that it says completed, done all these things, and it's good. And then it's just a matter of going through the rest of the issues in the same way that we've just done. What I like about this iOS vibe coding workflow is that it helps me stay organized. It lets me stay inside cursor and it forces me to use source control. I have links to all of the tools mentioned in the description below the video. And one reason why this workflow is timely is because very recently Zapier updated all of their plans to include MCP into the standard set of features along with tables and interfaces. But this video is focused on the MCP part. So even if you perpetually stay on the free Zapier plan, you're still able to use those MCP actions that I showed you today. As you've probably noticed by now, Zapier is sponsoring a series of videos on this channel, but it doesn't sway my opinion of the tool. I've been using it and paying for it personally since 2018, and they also don't get to see the video before it gets released. And I am able to decide on all of the video topics myself. So this is not a shameless promotion, rather helpful and productive ways to use Zapier in terms of iOS app development and vibe coding. Speaking of which, if you want to learn more about MCP, click on this video over here. Or if you want to check out my top 10 vibe coding tools for iOS, check out this video right here. I'll see you there.